So besides being an amazing chair of the board and listening to everybody's voice and opinion and making changes where it was possible, it's, it's, she has a great story about her business and how the chamber made such an impact on helping her to grow and um, just become really well respected in the community and do fantastic work. So I know we're going to learn a little bit more about what you do as part of your presentation. So I'm going to I'm going to say you're introduced. Welcome, Deb Beto. <laughs> well, thank you, Jani. And uh, actually, when you and I first, when you first asked me to do this presentation on outsourcing your operations, if you recall, I felt like it was a little bit self-serving. And so I, uh, we kind of changed the topic to be more around um, any type of outsourcing, not just operations. And I really want to make this presentation more about you than about me. Um, so if you really want to learn more about me and my story and my business, that's not what I'm going to do today, but we can do that over a cup of coffee sometime soon, one-on-one, -on -one, cause I'd like to hear everybody's own story too. Um, so today I'm hoping to make this more about you than about me. So I'm going to run you through some exercises to help you understand the type of work that you might want to consider outsourcing. And for those of you that use your intuition and logic to drive your decisions, we'll talk about the how and why to outsource some things. And for those of you that like to use more concrete analytics in your logic, I'm going to do a little bit of math into the decision making, but not enough math to lose everyone. So don't feel like, you know, the math thing is going to lose you. All right. So if we can go to the next slide. You've already seen, heard my 17 second commercial. And um, so this should not be new to you. If your job as a small business owner is to do nothing but generate revenue, and you made a list of everything you do that has nothing to do with generating revenue, you might get an idea of why your business is not growing as fast as it should. Um, so after our session today, you will get a better understanding of why you should consider outsourcing all of that other stuff to an experienced, affordable professional. Um, so I want to keep this really interactive today. So just to get an idea of where we're starting from, can you use your chat box to let everyone know what business processes you're currently outsourcing? I kind of want to hear what you might currently be outsourcing. And some, some typical things that people outsource, if you need a head start, is um, bookkeeping, um, IT, um, uh, those are probably the two most common, bookkeeping and IT, um, marketing. So tell me, use your chat box to, to just kind of let us know what, what types of things your business is currently outsourcing. If you don't outsource anything, then let us know that too. So you're getting ready to outsource some web design. Payroll and IT. Oh, yes, Kathy. Payroll is another big one that everybody outsources. Um, bookkeeping, social media marketing, blog writing. Yep, those are all, all good things. Uh, web hosting. Tamara does it all. Superwoman over there. Okay. So we kind of have a baseline, bookkeeping, audio engineers, writers, producers, story brand writers, social media, web hosting, all but most of the marketing. Nice. Kevin is an employee of his organization. That's fine, Kevin. Um, so think of this instead of, instead of thinking it as outsourcing, think of it as delegating to other people in the organization. So when I say outsourcing, you think you're thinking of delegating. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, move on here. So let's go to the next slide. So to summarize what we're going to kind of be talking about here, 
Um, we're going to have an interactive discussion around proficiency and pleasure to help you understand what to outsource. And this exercise focuses on understanding your own Zen in the workplace. And then we'll have an interactive discussion around holding on and letting go. The art of letting go is a practice that many entrepreneurs haven't mastered because like Tamara, we are used to doing it all ourselves. But once you understand your Zen, you will hopefully identify those things that are holding you back from accelerating your growth. And then finally, we will walk through the little bit of math that is involved in a cost-benefit analysis that will either prove or disprove that the top line will improve, even though you're spending money, and then that improvement will show up on the bottom line. So these exercises are meant to build one on top of the other. We, got, we have to do it in this order because if we do it in any other order, it won't make sense. So we're going to start with... Um, the next slide, which is proficiency and pleasure. So when I talk about proficiency and pleasure, I am talking about the Zen of employment. That's what I'm really going to get at with you. So there are things that you are good at and there are things that you enjoy doing. And just because you're good at something doesn't mean you enjoy doing it. And just because you enjoy doing something doesn't mean you're good at it. So the Zen of employment is finding out where the intersection is between what you're good at and what you enjoy doing. And then that intersection is the Zen of employment. Let's find out what you're good at and what you enjoy doing and make the most out of that because that's your, that's your core competency that you're going to get the most value out of. So let me give you some, some examples. I am really, really good at talking on the phone. Not my favorite thing to do though, but I'll do, I'll, I do it because it's part of the job and I have to do it. And there's just some things that you, you just can't do by email or, or even Zoom. Sometimes you just have to um, talk on the phone. So just, I'm really, really good at it. Just not my favorite thing. Um, on the other hand, something that I'm, that I really enjoy doing that I'm not good at at all. I love singing in the car. I am not a singer though. I mean, when I sing in front of my family, they say, no, stop, please don't sing anymore. No. So I just mouth the words to happy birthday. So, so just because you enjoy doing something doesn't mean you're good at it. I will never be a good singer, even if I take singing lessons and I don't even want to take singing lessons. So, but it's not going to stop me from doing it in the car, but I'm not going to make any money at it in the long run. So the Zen of employment is finding out what you're proficient at and what brings you pleasure. But there's opposites to that as well. The opposite, you know, is, is that there are things that you hate doing and you're not very good at it. Well, those are the things that you should be outsourcing. So if you focus on your core competencies, your Zen, then you will not only be leveraging your business, but you'll be more balanced in your work and life. And then, so when we just had that discussion that John presented to us about what are you doing to take care of yourself? Work-life balance is so important as part of that equation of what you're doing to take care of yourself. So when it comes to the Zen of employment, Finding out what you're good at and what brings you pleasure is going to bring automatically bring you more work and life in or work balance in your work and your life. Um, so let's go to the next. Click one. So we're going to talk about proficiency first. I think there might have been a handout. I don't know if you got the handout or not, but what I'd like you to do is. Um, uh, at the top of a piece of paper, I want you to write down um, three to five things in your job that you're really good at. Not You don't have to enjoy those things. I just want you to write down three to five things that you're really good at. So if you did get the handout, this is the part of the handout that you're going to be looking at that looks 
a little bit like this. Proficiency and pleasure. So on the top of the screen. Can you hold that closer to the camera? Yes. We can't see. quite see it because of the background. And I'm going to go ahead and drop those docs into chat, but. Yeah, the background is messing that up. So just at the top of your page, I just want you to write down three to five things. And you can do this on a blank piece of paper. I just I just sent out a, a, a uh, handout just to send out a handout. So at the top of the page, just write down three to five things that in your job you are really good at. And I don't care at this point if you enjoy those things or not. I just want you to write down three to five things. Maybe it's a... Um, Maybe it's something creative. Maybe it's something that is analytical. Maybe it's something to do with your interaction with others. Maybe it's um, something process oriented. Uh, just take take a minute here, and I'm, I'm I'll come back to you in just one second. All right, so now one click, John. So now at the bottom of the page, I want you to write down three to five things that you really get a lot of pleasure out from your work. Uh, and these are activities. They're not, they're not esoteric things like making money, but um, what, what types of activities really give you pleasure? And it doesn't need, need to be activities that you're good at. It just means like, oh gosh, if, if, if I'm really stuck in a rut and I, and I want to do something that is going to um, be more fun than what I was currently doing, what, what is that fun activity that you really like to do? And again, it might be something creative. It might have something to do with interaction. It might be you know, might be organizing your space. It might be um, sharpening your pencils. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but what, what kinds of activities really bring you pleasure in, in your day-to-day -day routine? For me, it's anything math related. I'm one of those weird ones. And again, these are, these are your work activities that you really enjoy doing. Not as e it's it's not as easy of a question as people think it is. Kind of your kind of work activities. Nope, not basketball, not golf. Maybe it is golf. Maybe you do golf for work. Yeah, that was one of mine. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But just because you enjoy it doesn't mean you're going to go on the PGA tour, does it? <laughs> It doesn't get better with age either. Yeah. All right. So one click, John. So what I want you to do now is look at your top list and look at your bottom list. Is there anything on your top list and your bottom list that are in common? And if, if there is, then, then that's, that's what I want you to put in the center part. So maybe just number your top things, one, two, three, four, five, and your bottom things, one, two, three, four, five. And then any of those numbers that are in common, um, if you're really good at golf and you love golf, then that would, then that would go in the center part there.
But if you're not that good at golf, but you really love it, then you're just going to leave it on the bottom. So we just want to find the commonalities. So one click, John. So the commonalities, that is your zen of employment. That is where what you're really good at and what you really enjoy intersect. And that, that's where the zen of your employment is. That is where your, your personal core competency is that is going to generate work-life balance. It's going to generate revenue and it's going to generate uh, you know, all of the satisfaction and also it's your competitive advantage over your, over your competitors. So this is where the Zen of your employment is. So one, so one click, John. So now that you understand what the Zen of employment is, we should have a little bit easier time identifying what to hold on to and what to let go of. So It takes vision and passion and courage to start a business, but processes, structure, and expertise are what sustain the business. So no matter how good you are, there is nobody that can do it all. You need other experts to help you fill in the gaps that you don't bring to the table. So um, next click, John. So when it comes to holding on and letting go, we have a few no-brainers. Next click. The first one is that you want to hold on to everything related to your core business. So think about what your core business is. So uh, for John, as as a podcast interviewer, your core business is podcast interviewing. You would not outsource that interviewing. Um. Uh, Janny, you, there are things that you would outsource, but you would never outsource your expertise that you bring as a coach. Don Sando, same thing. You're bringing your expertise as a business strategist. You wouldn't outsource that. So you would hold on to your core business and you would not outsource that. Next click. Next thing is a no brainer. You would hold on to your Zen. Everything that you enjoy and you get pleasure from, you should hold on to, but let go of everything that you don't get pleasure from and you are not good at. So if any, if there is anything in your daily work that you know you're not good at and you don't enjoy it, those are the things that you should be looking to outsource. Those are the no brainers. So Next click, John, the things that take some amount of brains or courage, next click, are deciding to outsource things you enjoy, but you may not be great at, or next click, deciding to outsource things that you are great at, but you don't really enjoy. So you've got, so you've got your no brainers and you've got your, your, uh, your areas of, um, consideration. So your no-brainers are your core values, your Zen, and everything that you don't like and are not good at. So the other things that that could take some courage or could take some additional thought thought process and what we're going to go through today is what are you good at, but you might not enjoy? And what do you enjoy, but you might not be good at? So those are the things you might want to consider outsourcing. I'm not saying you should outsource. I'm just saying you might want to, but you definitely want to outsource everything that you're not good at and you hate doing. So let's do a little bit of discussion. Why? So let's talk about the things that you're not good at and you don't enjoy doing. And if somebody can um, unmute themselves and let me know, why is it that you're not already outsourcing that? So Tamara, I'm going to start with you. So you said you do it all. What is, what is there in the doing it all that you don't enjoy and you're not very good at? Oh boy. Well, let me clarify um, because I do do it all, but I don't have to do a website. The company does that and maintains it. So those type of things are, you know, 
they're, they're off my plate. But as far as the book work, um, I can't say I'm not good at it, but I, I absolutely hate paperwork. <laughs> Uh-huh. So I get it done, but it's the one thing that I, I will put off doing the paperwork until it's like a month before taxes are due. Okay. <laughs> Got it. And, and, and so what is holding you back from outsourcing that? Because my business is so simple. Um, the Juice Plus company does a lot of, of things for us. I just don't see that it's, it's really not that time consuming and it would probably cost me more in the end to have somebody else do the little bit of paperwork that there really is other than if I just, you know, stayed on top of it and did it myself on a timely manner. Got it. So I just, I would rather be out with people. (laughs) Got it. And does anybody else have an example of something they're not good at and they hate doing? Maybe hate is a strong word, but don't enjoy doing and you're not good at. Does anybody have an example? Jani? I'm trying to think how to put it into words, but just the whole um, follow-up, you know, and, and Uh yeah, marketing and follow-up. And I, like Tamara, I love meeting people and interacting with people. But then the structure that has to happen after that to maintain and, a relationship and well, and, or not turn it into business. <laughs> and what's holding you back from that? From outsourcing that? Uh-huh. Paying for it. Well, and also mainly the finances, but also maybe there's a little bit of um, logistics and understanding you know, even figuring out, well, what would that look like? Mm -hmm. Got it. Anybody have um, a fear that if you, if you outsource it, you're going to number one, lose control or number two, the quality is going to deteriorate. Is there any fear involved? I I can say for myself, absolutely. Yes. Because for most of the part of 16 years, I did everything myself. And then uh, passing off, not so much the audio editing, but actually the producing. And, uh, you know, anyway, so a lot of fear about it. However, I found somebody that I I realized was actually better than me. Uh Which actually brought in a whole conversation within myself. Um, following the models of my predecessors like Steve Jobs and Gates and all those people to say they always looked for somebody that was better than them. Mm-hmm. So I have let go, but that and it's really letting go of control. But what I've been able to do or what I really want to do is empower those people. And I remind them, this is yours. Mm-hmm. This is yours to do. And, and, uh, you might make some mistakes and we'll figure out what it is and we'll just get better at what we do. So Good. that's kind of, you know, to answer the question is the fears went away when I just let go of control. But at the same time, I knew that they had it. Interesting. Okay. Good insight. How about you, Nyla? Is there anything that you don't enjoy and you know you're not that great at? I definitely am not, I, I guess I should say I'm like, uh, not into math. <laughs> so anything that has to do with like, uh, finances, taxes, um, you know, bookkeeping, accounting. So yeah, definitely the taxes, especially as a business owner, I have been outsourcing. Um, right. and then there's a few of, on the creative side of the business, there's definitely a few things that I, um, you know, get to a point where I'm just stuck. I'm like, this is taking too long. So I've learned to outsource it, but kind of like you said, I mean, I am uh, my, one of the things that the very first thing I put on my list that I'm really good at and that I, and that I actually love is like proofreading and quality assurance. So mm-hmm. as you can imagine, even though I'm more of a creative person, um, anytime I outsource, I am, you know, freaking out that there's going to be a mistake. (laughs) 
Right. You're, you know, you're, I'm going to have to spend yep. time cleaning it up. Really, but yeah, yep. so I'm learning. I'm learning. Nice. <laughs> and, and Kevin, what was on your Zen list just out of curiosity? Uh, no, you're, you're muted. Double clicking is not for muting and I'm muting. <laughs> um, uh, it's kind of what has already been brought up is that, uh, you know, my, my business is uh, very reliant or very dependent on people's trust in me. And you don't get that trust. You don't earn that trust without, uh, interacting in person so uh things i'm good at that i like to do is to meet people uh to find out their problems and if i can be a solution then i can help them and help myself so there are a lot of things in my business that um are things that need to be taken care of and, and a lot of it you know my, my i'm very happy working where i am i've been i've worked for a lot of different organizations in the insurance business and and uh i've never been at one that does such a great job of hiring quality people to to support me but um you know that's really my zen was was you know networking meeting people they're on both the top and the bottom um great and so that's it. Great. Golf, okay. golf and meals also get in there. <laughs> okay. So John, let's do one click. So sometimes it is difficult to let go, but sometimes it's even more difficult to hold on. And what that means is that by holding on, you're, you're, you're missing a lot of opportunities to grow. And it's, it's really interesting that people, entrepreneurs, um, like all of you, have the courage to start a business, but a lot of entrepreneurs lack the courage to really grow the business. And it's, and it's by letting go of the things that you're not good at and you don't enjoy that are really holding that are really that would really allow your business to grow by holding on to those things you're holding your business back so that's what i mean by sometimes it's difficult to let go but sometimes it's even more difficult to hold on because by holding on you're holding back the business so john let's go one click and another one so we've talked about Zen. Another click. We're now going to turn the Zen upside down. Another click. And put it into dollar and cents. So go ahead and one more click. And um, I haven't met a chamber member yet that wasn't interested in bringing more revenue in. So let's get down to the dollars and cents of it all. And this is where we will be doing some simple math on the worksheet that I've provided. So let's go down one more click. We're going to talk about the top and bottom line. And the worksheet that I provided is um, some just some simple, simple math. So what I'd want you to do, what I want you to start out with is how much do you charge for your product or service? So it's going to be uh, dollars per something whether that's an hour, a month, a piece, or whatever it might be. So this is obviously um, most simple. If you charge a dollar per hour, uh, you can figure this out pretty easily. So I want you in the top, the top green box on the first line, I just want you to write down how much do you, do you charge for your product or service? And it says per hour, but it doesn't have to be per hour. But if it's not per hour, I want you to write what it is. So maybe it's per piece and it's an average. So if you're a manufacturer of widgets, you might charge $10 per widget. So just write that down in your, on the worksheet. And this is the one that's called the cost benefit analysis handout. Um, and I promise for those of you that don't like math, this is not going to be, this is not going to be anything that you couldn't go through with your, with your young children. So 
Next, I want you to list down everything um, in, in space one through 10 that was from your no-brainer list. And remember, your no-brainer list are things that you don't enjoy and you're not good at. Don't write down, I mean, you can write down other things if you want to, but just write down three to five to 10 <laughs> things that you don't enjoy and you're not good at in the first column. Just make a list. So I think we heard a lot of uh, bookkeeping things, a lot of math things, a lot of, uh, we heard some follow-up activities. And then in the second column, I want you to tell me, but it's listed at the top, it says column A. I want you to tell me how many hours per year are you spending on that activity? So if you're only spending a half hour a month, then you're only spending six hours a year on that activity. But if you're spending three hours a month, then you're spending 36 hours a year on that activity. So just next to each one that you wrote down, how many hours per year are you spending on that activity? And then in the next column, column B, on a level of one to five, one being a complete expert and five being, yikes, no way, not, don't even ask me any questions about it. What is your level of expertise on that subject? <clears throat> so you might, you might have a level of expertise to do the task, but does that mean you could really talk your way around the entire subject? If somebody else wanted to do the same thing for their business and they came to you with questions, could you tell them how to do it in their business? Do you have that level of expertise? So one being a complete expert and five being yikes, no way. Then in column C, we're going to multiply column A times column B. So if you're spending three hours a year and you're an expert, then your total would be three times one, which is three. If you're spending five hours a year and you're not an expert, then it'd be five times five would be 25. So multiply column A times column B and put that number in column C. All right, and now at the bottom of column C, total that, total up the numbers in that column. All right, so there's a theory that was proposed by ADP several years ago, and um, I've seen it in other places too, but I can't 
find the reference. I searched and searched and searched for the reference in order to uh, have this presentation today. And I really need to find this. But um, the theory is that it takes an outsourced professional, someone that has expertise in the field, about a third of the time to do the work than it does to have the work done in-house. Um, and part of that is because if you hire an employee to do the work, they're not totally focused on that work the whole time. They are getting up from their desk, going to the water cooler, having a conversation with coworkers, maybe checking email. In order to get you know, one report done, they're spending three times the amount of time that it would take an outsourced professional to complete that work. And um, the outsourced professional, when they're completing the work, they're billing you not to get up from their desk and go to the water to get some water. And they're not billing you to have a conversation with somebody They're When they're on your clock, they're on your clock. They're totally focused on doing that work. So given the same level of expertise, um, it, it, it takes far less time for an outsourced professional to get the work done than it does for an employee to get the work done. In addition, the outsourced professional, because that's all they do, they have a higher level of expertise. They're not having to relearn how to do it all the time. They're not having to, um, to retrain themselves. They, they already have that expertise. So in addition to not having the distractions, they also have the expertise to do it quicker as well. So that's where the theory comes in that says it takes an outsourced professional a third of the time to get the work done than it does a full-time employee. So now in column D, I want what I want you to do is take your total from, col from the bottom of column C and divide it by three and put that number in column D. So that's going to tell you um, how long compared to you and your expertise how long it's going to take an outsourced professional to do the work compared to you doing the work. So if it's, if it's taking you, you know, 10 hours a year to do something and you've got no expertise, then, then 50 divided by three would be your, your number. <clears throat> Little bit of math, but it's not difficult math. So now if you take your top line number, your um, how much do you charge for your product or service? And you multiply that by the, by the total in column C. Then you're going to see how much potential revenue you're losing. So if your total in columns E, the do-it-yourself column, is bigger than column D, then you should be outsourcing because it's going to cost you less to outsource it than what you could be generating in revenue. Is everybody with me? And then one little other piece of math is how much should you be paying a professional to do it? So in that one, you would um, take the total in column D, divide the divide the do-it-yourself rate. Oh no, I'm sorry. Take take the total in column E and divide it by column D, and that'll tell you the maximum that you should be paying a professional to do it. So now so now you know what your negotiation rate is. And I'll give you a hint. It's gonna be it's gonna be your rate divided by three. It's a third. So 
once you understand what the professional charges to do the work compared to what you would be losing to do it yourself, if, if a professional, charges you three times as much as your rate, then, then you're in equilibrium there. So I know that was a little bit too much math for seven o'clock in the morning, but, but you can take this cost benefit analysis with you and, and, um, and uh, do this math on your own later on. John, we'll go to the next slide. If you're still not convinced, I'm gonna have John just run through these really quick. Only pay for what you need as you need it, which is much more effective, much more cost effective than hiring an employee. Next one. There's you don't have to pay health insurance, payroll taxes, workers' compensation insurance, hiring costs, training, downtime during vacation, employee replacement costs, supplies, equipment, anything extra for, for hiring uh, an outsourced professional. Next one. Skilled experts who are able to give 100% focus to the task during billable time. And our last one, the experts are staying top on top of the compliance issues that could quickly find a non-expert facing fines, penalties, and lawsuits for non-compliance. So those are some, some uh, advantages to outsourcing that, that can't be put into a math equation. Next slide. Um, when it comes to outsourcing, you have your chamber resources. Your ops manager does human resources, accounting, payroll, compliance, benefits administration, and strategic planning. But you have other chamber members that do IT, tax preparation, marketing and creative, janitorial and cleaning, legal, moving services, coaching and consulting, and training. So use your chamber note chamber resources to find your next outsourced professional and your next slide. Why get a notification that a task is due when you can get a notification that the task is done. Thank you everybody for your time today. I'm sorry I went a little bit over and I don't know if we have time for questions or not, but I can be reached at uh, deb at your if you have any.